I am Marcus James Dixon with Gold Derby, and we are now joined by the godfather of reality TV, Jonathan Murray. Um, Jonathan, we're here today to talk about the real world homecoming. But before we do, I, I kind of want to remind people that before you came along, there were no reality show categories at the Emmys. I mean, the real world 30 years ago, we're celebrating the 30th anniversary. Um, how do you think the genre has changed in, in, over the past three decades? Well, it's exploded. I mean, uh, when when we you're right when we when Real World uh, was born back in 1992, uh, and we would submit for the Emmys, they didn't have a reality category, so we would be in, you know, nonfiction going up against a Bill Moyers news special. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> it was many years before they uh, got the competition category, and then the uh, uh, reality category, which now has been divided into structured and unstructured. Um, so. Um, yeah, I mean, before us, that this idea of casting people and putting them together um, to learn something hadn't been done. We had, we'd had documentaries where we just follow seven people who are already friends, but no one had had this idea of putting people together to see what would happen. And the New Orleans season of Homecoming is streaming right now on Paramount Plus. Um, it reunites the cast from the 2000 season and first of all, of all of the former cast you could have brought back, what was it about this New Orleans group? They're a special group, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Um, you know, we had done a, a, a homecoming with the New York cast and with the LA cast. And then it was like people say, well, why jump ahead to New Orleans? Well, New Orleans, um, it was 2000. Uh, and that cast just, they, they hit on some issues that are so relevant today. Um, and we, and we knew that we could get all seven of them to come, mm -hmm. um, that we just think there were, thought there was a real opportunity. Plus there was some unfinished business uh, between them. So we felt that there was going to be um, a really powerful story that would take place. Uh, and that that powerful story would happen within a group of friends who really do consider themselves family with each other. So yes, they might, you know, um, explode a little, but they were going to come back together because there was something solid between them. Mm. So none of them took extra coaxing to come on board. They were all like, yes, 100%, I'm in. Yeah, I mean, I think they wanted to, they had had the benefit of seeing what we did with uh, New York, particularly. Uh, um, and they saw that this was an interesting opportunity for them to really um, work with us to sort of tell their stories of what it, what it, how that initial experience had affected them and um, what things had happened to them since then. Um, so I think they felt comfortable seeing what they saw with the New York season. And then um, our, our, our producer, James Knox and Kevin Lee really spent a lot of time with them um, sort of uh, finding out what they wanted to explore. And I think they felt that they could come into a very um, safe space uh, to have this homecoming. Mm. I absolutely love the juxtaposition of the current story merged with old footage. And then there's also a lot of deleted scenes that didn't make it on, on the show, you know, 22 years ago. Can you talk about the process of going back into the old archives and finding all of these old fun clips to use? Yeah, well, it's uh, it takes time. Believe me, um, there's a lot of tapes and I, I don't think we 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 notated them as well as we should have back then. So um, there's a lot of um, surfing through to find things. Um, but, you know, and then some things seem to have more relevance now. Um, uh, Melissa, particularly, there were a couple of times she used the phrase white privilege back then. And I think we just it just sort of went by us and I don't even think we included it in the initial show. And so that when we went back and we were talking about some of these issues that had come up back then and how they, how we felt about them today, there was an opportunity to, to take a second look and see, well, maybe we missed some things. Maybe we didn't get it as producers. So interesting. Um, and, and going in, when you have a house full of 40 year olds, as opposed to 20 year olds, you probably assume you're not going to get as much drama, but that isn't really the case with New Orleans because there, I am watching these episodes like I cannot believe this is happening. 
um, they're bringing the fun, they're bringing the drama every episode. Yeah, well, again, we knew there was definitely some, some unresolved issues. So we had a pretty good idea that when Julie walked in, Melissa and Danny were gonna be like, oh no, you don't just get to hug me right away. We got some stuff to talk about. Um, and so, and, and, and then we knew that um, uh, David Broom, who now goes by Tokyo had just, he was a new man. I mean, there was, uh, there were, he was someone who had clearly grown and changed and, and maybe we were seeing some of who he originally was, but didn't show us. So there was, there was a lot to, um, to explore. And uh, I have to give uh, the cast tremendous credit for being um, so open and not editing themselves and, and just, uh, you know, trusting the process. Again, they, we helped build this with them because we talked to them, well, what things do you want to explore? And so, you know, we do these little tape montages of key scenes or, or key moments or sometimes previously unseen material. Um, but they know that stuff is coming. And so they're prepared to sort of talk about it. Mm. And one of the real life topics brought up this season is don't ask, don't tell. And viewers are instantly reminded just how much of a trailblazer the real world and Don Danny Roberts actually were. Um, can you talk about that aspect at all? Sure, when we recorded um, the original real world New Orleans, um, uh, if you were in the um, armed forces, you could not reveal that you were gay. And if you did, you would be um, summarily dismissed. And between the time we cast Danny and when he showed up, he had fallen for a young man, Paul, who was in the military. And so when Paul came to visit Danny, we would have to blur his face because if it was known who he was, he would have been kicked out of the military. Um, you know, and it was interesting because what viewers didn't know is that after the show, Danny and Paul just felt this pressure to stay together, even though their relationship was starting to deteriorate. And they probably stayed together longer than they would have normally. And then it was just also so much pressure on them because Don't Know, Ask, Don't Tell hadn't ended after we stopped filming. So when they would grocery shop together, they would be concerned that Paul could be outed. Um, so it was great for Danny to have an opportunity on this homecoming to, to meet with Paul and for the two of them to heal some of the pain that they had gone through back then when they broke up. And seeing the old clips of Paul's face where it, it goes from blurred to unblurred, that was such a cool moment production-wise. Yeah, um, absolutely. And you mentioned Melissa. Um, the, the new season talks about the topic of race and juxtaposing that with 22 years ago and some of the things she's saying are absolutely just as relevant to today. It, it's mind blowing to watch. Yeah, and she, you know, and she really um, made us as producers think about things like, you know, the idea that we would sometimes put a young um, white person in who didn't have a lot of experience. And in a way we were putting them in the position, Melissa or Tokyo of having to teach you know, and that's a lot of pressure. Um, so, you know, this was a great experience for all of us to sort of um, look at the way we made that show. I mean, there was a lot of good that we did with it, but we weren't perfect. And this was an opportunity for us to sort of set back and let the cast sort of um, wake us up a little bit to um, ways we could be better producers. So, um, you know, and we were able to make an incredibly entertaining show at the same time. Hmm. Well, final question, you know, the, the finale is a, a couple of weeks away, I believe. Um, is there anything you can tease about what we're going to see this season? And do you have any news about a future season at all? Uh, you know, this New Orleans season, um, it, it, it just doesn't stop. Um, right up into the last episode, there is something in the last episode that really completely surprised us and something we weren't prepared for. So um, yeah, stay tuned. It, it, it just keeps building. Um, and no, we haven't, um, we haven't explored what season we'll do next if we get a chance to do one, um, but uh, uh, we definitely have a small list that uh, uh, we can quickly pull out of the drawer when, uh, when Paramount Plus is ready to make another season. Well, thank you so much, Jonathan. Thank you.